Well, thank you. Okay. All right, take it away. <laughs> thank you so much for partnering with the Ventura World for this Tuscany, uh, Italy trip. Um, this is November 1 through to the 9th, and then there's an extension period of a couple more days if you'd like to be in Rome. So I'm going to go through everything as quickly as I can. If we can have questions, maybe at the end. And also, I'll be if you want to put it in chat, you can do that, and then we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. And I will have additional information for you uh, on registering and um, insurance, trip insurance, if that's something you want um, at the end, and that can be sent to you by email as well so that you'll have directions and things like that. So let's start with this. So for uh, day one, we're on our way to Tuscany, Italy, and it's an overnight flight, and it'll be leaving from Boston, Massachusetts. And you are going to um, have food and beverages on the plane. But we do not, uh, just so you know, we do not have um, uh, any information right now on what airline we're using or what the schedule will be. Um, I know that's something a lot of people like to know right at the beginning, but we will not have that information until about 45 days prior to your departure date, which is November 1st. And once we get it, we will definitely let you know about it. So a little bit about Aventura World. Um, we're a valued leader in the US group travel marketplace since 1972. We actually celebrated 50 years last year in 2022. Um, we're a member of the Saqqara International Group, and we actually have thousands of employees all across the world working with us. We have offices on the east and west coast of the United States, and then we have offices in Paris and Rome and London and Delhi and Cairo. Uh, we are dedicated to revealing the treasures of the world from the capitals of Europe to Australia's Great Barrier and all points between. We are the official travel partner of the Association of Chambers of Commerce Executives. We're a travel wholesaler, and that means we can bring tremendous value to you, especially in the price area, without offering or affecting the quality of the trip itself. And we change with the times, and we call ourselves the leader in value price programs in the United States. And after this presentation, I hope you agree. So these are some of the things that you're going to have an opportunity to see. The Pisa Leaning Tower, organic farming, Tuscany meals, which are absolutely delicious, Neptune's Fountain, and here we're, is that exactly where we're going. We're going into the central part here of Italy. Florence is over here. Siena is over here. We'll be going all through this area here. So welcome to Italy and Parlevu Italiano. And on day two, you're going to arrive in Italy and we will arrive um, at the Pisa or Florence airport. And after we have picked up our luggage, cleared customs and immigration, we will walk out the exit door and your Aventura World Tour director will be standing there waiting for you. They will have a sign that says um, Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce, welcome, and they'll be watching for you. So then we'll hop on our bus, our motor coach, and these are very comfortable. We're going to be using these a lot and we'll put all the luggage underneath and off we go to the hotel. So the hotel we'll be staying at uh, is the Grand Hotel Tamarici and Principi. And this is a really nice hotel. I've stayed there. Uh, it's about a four-star hotel, very comfortable, very clean. And it's in the center of Montecatini, which is where we're going to. So Montecatini is known for its spas, thermal spas specifically. And depending on who you talk to, there are between nine and 11 of these spas that are open to the public. And the water temperature runs between 24 and 33 degrees um, uh, centigrade. So very nice warm water, very, um, very healing water. And Montecatini has been known for this um, since the days of the Romans. It is an old, old city 
beautiful city. Um, the architecture is Renaissance style, and you will find that um, those spas are really worth taking a day and dipping in them and just relaxing. So the, there's another part of Montecatini, and it's called Montecatini Alto. And this is our home base town that we're going to be traveling to and from and staying in the hotel. And we stay in this hotel uh, the seven nights. So you don't have any traveling that you have to worry about. You don't have to unpack anything. You can unpack it one time and then that's it. So here on Al uh, Montecatini Alto, you can look across the city. And uh, you are usually able to take the funicular up to the, this area. Um, the funicular is like a rail car and it goes up a, a steep slope that they take you up there. You can also walk it and I've walked it and I walked down it. I didn't walk up it and it's pretty easy walk. So that might be something um, the funicular usually runs uh, during tourist season and, and believe you'll be there still in the tourist season time. So Monte Catini Alto has some great restaurants also. There's all kinds of restaurants um, within walking distance of the hotel. You will find uh, anywhere, either up on the mountain uh, by it or in within a couple, oh, a block, and you'll be with all sorts of choices. And of course, Tuscan cuisine is delicious and it's known worldwide also. So this is a little bit more of what's close to the hotel. So shopping, markets, things like that. And again, a little bit more here. Um, the Italians drink more coffee than anybody else in Europe. So again, if you're a coffee person, you can sit out in the restaurant area here and enjoy a coffee. Um, a lot of the restaurants have outside seating. They don't necessarily have inside seating. So it's really fun. Uh, if it's cool, they have heaters and blankets in a lot of the uh, areas. So on day three, we're going to start off in Montecatini because that's where our hotel is. We're going to have breakfast. And on your brochure, you will find that it says B or in parentheses, or it'll say L in parentheses, or it will say D in parentheses. I'm getting confused here. Um, so you will find that that means breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so if it's on your brochure and you see that this is what is already part of your package that you um, have paid for, and it will be included. So this is an overview, and it's a, this is an old photo of, of, of Florence. And here's the Florence Cathedral that you will see. This cathedral was built in the 1300s. It's absolutely beautiful, absolutely amazing. And here again, and the Duomo is right here that it's famous for. Uh, Florence is known for the artistic um, uh, sculptures, the artistic buildings. Uh, it is leads in the artistic area in Italy. And for those of you that want to, you can actually purchase tickets um, and the tour guides will be able to tell you or we will be able to tell you ahead of time uh, to see the copy of Michelangelo's David, the sculpture. This is a, again, a view of Florence. And I'm just gonna get a little bit more information for you here. So, in Florence, and here's an older picture again, so not much has changed if you take a look at it. This is the Arno River through here. And this is the Piazza della Signora. This um, plaza is built in the shape of a W and it is the main political square for the whole of Florence. And they have some of the most beautiful government buildings here and these buildings are very, very, very old. This is uh, the Palazzo Vecchio, and this was a palace at one time. It's now a museum. Uh, this clock here has been here since the 1600s. And again, you'll get a chance to walk around and see it. You can go in if you, ha you'll have a leisure day farther down in the week. And if that's something you wanted to do, you would probably find it pretty easy to come back to Florence. There's so many different things to see. And this is what it looked like back in the 1400s. So again, you can see not really too much of a difference from today and back then. This is the Arno River, and this is the oldest bridge in Florence. And this is the only bridge in Florence that was not bombed by the Germans in World War II. So it is the only bridge. All the other ones behind it are all much newer. 
And there it is again. And you'll, you'll, your coach will stop by it and you can take pictures and things like that. So after you've passed through there, you're going to go to Old Toronto, which is, um, it's a district that has a lot of textile, um, material, textiles, arts, things like that. And you'll have free time to shop. And you'll have uh, time to just walk around and you know, stop at a cafe and have coffee. And these are some of the things that you will actually see in some of the shops. It's very interesting. It's considered one of the coolest cities to be in in uh, Italy. So and uh, this part of it, this district. And of course, there's the market. So water is safe to drink in Italy, but we provide bottled water on our buses, our coaches. And um, also there'll be bottled water provided in your hotels. And so you don't have to drink the local water. The, on the buses, they sell it for two bottles of water for one euro or two bottles of water for one American dollar. A little bit more about Florence. Um, it, the Florence dialect forms the base of the standard Italian language nowadays. Uh, Florence plays an important role in fashion. It is one of the top 15 fashion capitals in the world. And it's a major artistic, cultural, commercial, political, and economic and financial center. It was in its day, um, it, many years ago, it was known as the wealthiest city in Italy. And of course, they take photos of you as a group. So your group, your friends, you'll have uh, reminders of this great trip. And then on day four, we're going to again start with breakfast in Montecatini. And then we'll hop on the motor coach and we're going to come to Pisa and Luca. So Pisa is known for the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but also the Duomo and the Baptistry. And then this area through all of here is called the Field of Miracles. And this all was started early in the 12th and 13th centuries. These buildings were started to being built. And um, you will find that there's lots to see. We give you plenty of time to take pictures. You could climb up to the top of this tower if you like, it is steps. Um, and they have, depending on which side you go, there are 296 steps on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, which is the side that's a little shorter, you will find that there are 294 steps. So you can climb either way and count them all the way up if you want to. And again, it's a great place for photos. So a lot of people like to take photos there. And this is the Baptistry in Duomo. And you will find that you will be able to, we go in there. It's very, very interesting, the acoustics. Um, your tour guide, the local tour guide will give you a lot of information and history about this part. And there's the Baptistry also. And again, more pictures. They actually have a spot right around the corner here that if you stand there, you'll be able to hold up the tower in your photos. And the Miracle of Fields and more photos. So then we're going to go on to Luca. And Luca is well known for, again, the different types of buildings. It's known for this tower. Um, also, it was built in the 13th century. It also has about 20 churches, um, ancient churches, and a lot of castles, um, palaces, and really old bridges. So on your leisure day that you will have, if you think this might be an area you'd like to go to, it's not that far from um, Montecatini. And so it might be some a trip that you want to take either on the rail car, or you can also take cabs. They have those available. Again, more photos. And this is... Um, one of the squares here in Luca. And this is the home of Puccini and many other, there are quite a few other um, uh, famous, very famous uh, musicians. And so again, uh, great museums with those types of things in them. It's also known for its tower here. And this tower is, it was, is 150 feet tall and was built about the 12th century, still standing. This is overlooking Luca, and you can see the whole plaza. And more photos. And of course, this is a great place to eat. We ate there, we had pizza. It was delicious. It was the real deal with the Italian pizza. And of course, places to explore. All these little 
places, all these doors are shops. And you can go in and get pottery, you can get textiles, you can get um, paintings, uh, all sorts of leather goods, all sorts of different things. Day five, we're gonna do Sienna tour. And Sienna, again, overlooking it, very, very old city. And here is an old picture of it. So not too much has changed. Sienna's really rolling hills, olive trees, grapes, uh, grapevines. That's what Sienna is all about. It's very agricultural. It also has the world's oldest bank from 1475 and that bank is still in operation so again your tour the tour director will give you more information on all of it and you'll be able to see it as well and again more photos we always take lots of photos everybody does and then we're going to piazza del campo now this is special this is where the horse races are and twice a year in july i think it's july 12th and then august 16th they race horses and the riders are bareback. And the horses and the riders represent 10 of 17 regions within this area of Siena. And you will see, this is a shell shaped. It's absolutely amazing. These horses race like crazy three times around. This gives you an idea of the crowds that attend. And these are the type of horses. They are a special Italian horse. And they put sod in so the horses don't slip and race them. And I'm sure there's plenty of bedding going on as well. And there's lots of pageantry. And it's ancient, ancient tradition. And this is the castle here, also in Siena. Or not castle, the cathedral. Beautiful cathedral. Again, a very popular duomo that they have on them. And this is the type of countryside you're going to be seeing. And you'll be going at about this time when they've harvested. And so the colors will be similar to this. So on day six, you have an optional tour or you can spend time at leisure in Montecatini. But your optional tour is Cinque Terre. And Cinque Terre means five lands, which really means five villages. And they're on the Riviera, the Italian Riviera, and each village is very different and the colors are magnificent. So as you can see, right along the Mediterranean, just beautiful colors, very rugged hills, but each area is totally different, each village. And you will go by train, by railway, to the villages and you will be, I believe you stop in one or two of these villages. This is also a mission, old mission here. And there are hiking trails up here. So if someone feels inclined, you can climb up and you can take some fabulous pictures looking down across these little uh, villages. Some of the products they grow here are grapes, olives, lemons in one of the villages and then anchovies. They're known for anchovies as well. Your next day uh, tour is going to be here. And this is going to be, as you can see, grapes and vineyards. And there are 14, town, uh, 14 towers in San Giovanni that are uh, famous. They've been here for centuries. And again, more towers. You will probably walk up one of these streets and be able to look out high up. It's quite high up, this uh, little village in the a mountain area. It's quite high up. And so you have a great chance to look around at everything. There are also some really great shops. They have all sorts of shops and more towers. And again, different merchants. Some of the cheeses, there are a lot of really great cheeses in Italy. And what we always suggest is go into one of these shops and buy some cheese, buy some bread, buy a bottle of wine, take it back to the hotel and enjoy it. And you can see pottery also that's available to purchase. And much of this is handmade. 
And this is the type of scenery you will see throughout this area. Now, just outside of San Germano, we're going to go to uh, Chianti. And of course, this is where the Chianti wines are made. And you're going to do a wine tasting and you're going to learn about the Chianti classic um, and how it is regulated by the government so that any wine that comes out of this region, they know is 100% from the Chianti area. And it's also known for uh, the saffron, saffron in this area and white wines, obviously. And of course, here's where they stir all the barrels of wine. You will have a wine tasting um, and they'll have local foods as well from a local farm. And you'll have a dinner that night also at a local farm. It's just beautiful and it, all the food is, is delicious. And this gives you an idea again of what this area looks like. So you'll also have free time. And you could go back to Montecatini and spend the day in Montecatini and try out some of those spas, go shopping, just enjoy um, Montecatini Alto, stop at the restaurants or the cafes, or you can go on to other places and you can check with the concierges in the hotels on if you want to get on the railway system and go down a little bit to another town, something like that. They'll help you with getting that information. And this is again, San Germanio, which is um, obviously very mountainous area. Italy is very mountainous in this area. And again, more local shops with the meats and the cheeses. There's lots of shopping out on the streets. The markets are open um, quite often till three or four in the afternoon. A lot of places close um, about 12, 30, one o'clock for almost like a siesta, but then they'll open back up around 5.30 and stay open till 9.30 at night. So you'll find that most of our trips, you're back um, in time for dinner, either to have dinner at the hotel or get dinner somewhere else. So you'll still have time to do shopping and looking around of course food you'll see lots of these little cars especially if you travel to rome you will see many of them and um they park everywhere they park on the streets on the side streets in the middle of the road how they manage to uh, keep traffic going don't know but that's what they do so those of you, actually, those of you that are going to see this as your last point uh, in Italy, um, we will have a dinner in Montecantini at the hotel, um, and it'll be Tuscan style dinner again, and you will be able to say farewell to all the new friends you've made, and you will go back home to the United States. So on the ninth Day, you actually on day nine you actually will leave Montecatini and travel back either to Florence or Pisa and then on the way to home. We also have a little bit of an extension so you'll go over we'll go over that in a minute so that you can stay a little longer if you'd like to and that will be to Rome. But these are some of the scenes that you're going to remember. Must have been a soccer tournament everybody looks pretty happy they must have won. Of course, here's the oldest bridge on the Arno River in Florence. The markets, lots of choices. And we want to welcome you to the family of Adventura world. And so this trip, I'm going to go over it a little bit. Your air transportation is from Boston, Massachusetts. It's your hotel is first class accommodations and it's seven nights. You have 10 meals, including seven buffet breakfasts and three dinners. The sightseeing program includes a um, guided tour to Florence, uh, excursion to Pisa and Lucca, including Leading Tower in the Baptistry, then full day tour of Siena, full day excursion to San Germano and the Chianti region, including wine tasting. And then there are the optional tours available as well, like the Cinque Terre that we uh, mentioned. So part of the cultural discovery series that we like to do and so on every one of our trips, we always have a cultural discovery 
uh, day or portion of the day. And that means uh, the old Trano district in Florence, where you were able to see the different textiles and things that they have, the workshops, um, the local craft, wine tasting, and then also the local dinner at the countryside farm with the wine tasting as well. So all of that's included as and considered a cultural discovery series. Uh, you have a prof professional tour director. That tour director uh, comes from the region. They will stay with you at the hotel the whole time. So should you need them any time of the day or night, they are available. Anybody needs a doctor, anybody has questions about the trip, anything like that, they are going to be there and be available to help you. Our motor coaches are um, private deluxe air conditioned motor coaches. They do have restrooms on them, but we don't usually use them. You'll find that we stop every hour, every two hours, somewhere every day um, to see something, to shop, uh, to get a coffee or to get a snack. So you'll find that there are lots of stops where you'll be able to use the restroom if you wish and also get something to eat, get something to drink, things like that. And then baggage handling and transfers, that's uh, outside of the airport. So we help with getting all of those on the motor coach and obviously back into the hotels as well. So when you do this part from Boston overnight to, to Tuscany, Italy, your price is $2,899 per person. And that's with double occupancy. For single occupancy, if you just have one person that wishes to go, then you add the $699. A lot of times I have in my chamber, I have taken a list of names of people who are single who might like to share a room with somebody that they don't know. A lot of people do, especially the ladies would like are wanting to do that. And so I usually um, give them phone numbers or email addresses and they call each other and they talk or visit for lunch or something. And if they decide that they can probably live with each other for nine days, um, then they go for it. If not, no problem. You've had a chance to decide whether you wanted to be single on the trip or whether you want to share with someone. The fuel charges of $350 per person are actually included in this $2,899 cost. And the, but there is a $150 tax, it's land taxes and all airports charge it. We don't have anything to do with it. We simply have to have it paid. Um, so, they don't change too often. We haven't had any changes with all of the airline changes recently. We haven't heard of any changes yet. So it looks like everything's going to be getting more stable and will stay the same. So this is an early bird. This $2,899 is an early bird special. And you need to reserve your program and with a deposit by April the 6th. Okay, so you have a few, you have a month month a little bit over a month to decide if you want to go you don't have to pay the full amount you simply have to put the deposit down and i'll go over all of that with you in a minute uh, the price increases by a hundred dollars to two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars after the april 6th date so you still can um, register it's just going to cost you a hundred dollars more and we don't usually have to substitute hotels or adjust itineraries, but if for some reason there was a day that was a little cooler or too warm for one of the day trips, they might change it around a little bit, but we usually leave it to their discretion because they know their uh, communities and know the weather there and everything else. So if you wish, you may continue back home to the USA, or you can extend your trip to Rome for a couple more days. And if you're going to Italy, and if you haven't ever been to Italy, then I would suggest try stay those extra couple of days so that you can see the Rome and you can also experience the Sistine Chapel and also the Vatican. Because even whether you are Catholic or not, this is an amazing thing to see. So if you were to continue with us for the Rome extension, then it will be November 9 to the 11th for 2023. It, we have first class accommodations in Rome and it's right in the heart of everything. So you will be able to walk to restaurants, walk to museums. Uh, you may have to take an Uber or a cab to some other things. There's also a bus that takes you and your hotels will help you with those types of things that you want to do. We also have a superb cuisine. You will have two meals included and those are two buffet breakfasts. 
The sightseeing program includes the tour guide. You will have a tour guide with you and the entrance fees for the city tour of ancient Rome. And then we have a couple of optional tours, which I'm going to go over with you in a minute. Uh, the professional tour director stays with you the whole entire two days. Make sure you're okay. Everything's going well for you. Uh, deluxe motor coaches, again, the same motor coach that we have. And then baggage handling and transfers, the same thing. So getting you in and out of the airport. The Rome extension costs an additional $699 for double occupancy or $998 for a single person. So when you arrive in Rome, you're going to do a city tour of the ancient area of Rome. And that includes the Colosseum. Now they don't um, have the tickets for you to enter into the Colosseum, but you can purchase those ahead of time if that's something you'd like to do. And the, after this city tour, which is in the afternoon of, the, of day nine, then the next day, which is day 10, it's free day for you to do whatever you like. And if you wanted to do something, you could come back to this. Also, you can see here the Trevi Fountains, the um, ancient ruins, parts of the uh, Vatican, the Vatican itself, which is obviously the home of the Pope, the Swiss guards. This, now this is an optional tour and it, it shows it on your reservation for the costs. And if this is something you want to see, it's once in a lifetime. If you go to Rome only once and Italy only once, this is absolutely magnificent when you think of how old it is and how it's all been taken care of. This is a, a, a little bit more for you to see. It's absolutely beautiful. You also have, with the Vatican, you can also, um, purchase a Vatican tour as well. And so that is something, again, that's on the reservation form that we'll show you. With the, both of these optional tours, you will have tour guides. This is their specialty. They will give you the history, the stories, everything else. So on the last day, which would be day 11, you will be homeward bound. So you'll have breakfast in Rome and then you are taken to the airport where you hop on a plane to come home to the United States. So visas are not required for US citizens right now. And here's how you sign up. So you ha I have a copy here of your uh, registration form with your pricing, the $2.99 before April the 6th, and then it goes up by $100. You can book it with a paper form, just like this form, or you can do it online. And down here on the left-hand corner, it gives you the information of going to www.aventuraworld.com slash booking. And they give you a code here. You simply enter the code in and I'll show you how in a minute online you can do it. But basically it's the same thing. So what you need to do is put your first name, your middle name and your last name. You must have this exactly as it says on your passport. And if you're considering coming with us to Italy, you want to make sure your passport is current. So. Check your passports now. This is short, you know, within this few days. And if your passport needs to be renewed, then you need to go online and or you can go to passport office, uh, but online or I believe the um, uh, post office has them also and you can fill out the forms. It's taking quite a while to get a passport right now because so many people are traveling. And so you will want to do that as soon as possible. If your passport needs to be renewed, if you have a passport, then again, you need to also do the same thing, renew it. 
But before you do that, put your passport number that you have right now in here. And then at the notes section, write that you are applying for a new passport. If you don't have a passport, then leave that blank. But in the notes section, put down that you have applied for a passport. And I would suggest putting down the date that you send your application in because it takes anywhere between six and eight weeks for it to come back, sometimes longer. And you want to make sure that um, you, you know when you send it in in case you have to trace it with the mail or with FedEx or whoever you send it by. So you put your name in, you fill out here your address, make sure you put in a current email so um, Adventure World can get in touch with you because we need that email, it's very important. Phone numbers, that type of thing. And then when you get down to here, you want to tell people whether you're going to be single occupant or you're going to be a double occupant. And who are you sharing your room with? Okay. Now, if you have someone that wants, you have three of you that want to share, it's a little bit hard to do that in um, Italy with the hotels. Uh, if you do have a room for three, then someone will be on a cot. So two people will be in beds, but somebody else will be on a cot. And then the bathrooms are not huge. So that might be a little bit of a problem if three of you are trying to get in and out of a bathroom. So just remember those things. Then we've got optional tours down here. So if you want to go to Cinque Terre, you mark yes, and here's the price, okay? Same with the Vatican trip and the Sistine Chapel, same thing. If that's something you want to do, you mark yes here. If not, then no. Then the extension, if you want to go to Rome, yes or no, and there's your price. You total either this section or this section up, and then you transfer it back over here. So your base price is the $2,899. Add in your optional trips, add in um, your optional extension. If you're going to Rome, the tax we have to add in and you total everything here. If you wait until after April the 6th, then your price will be $100 more. Do exactly what you've done though here on this side and total it. Now we suggest that you buy travel protection. You can buy travel protection with your a company that you deal with now, maybe with your own insurance plans that you have for car or home insurance, things like that. Or you can do it this way through the through our company. Now it's not our company. It actually is an insurance company that we deal with that we um, have you fill out the forms. They will respond back to you and you will then get your insurance. You'll be able to buy it either directly or if you pay online, they will then, um, Aventura World will purchase it for you and you will get an email confirming and the policy, a copy of the policy. So what you would do, you would decide um, your total cost that you did here or here, and you would look to see if it is included in which area. There are two types of insurance. Um, cancel for, there is the basic insurance, and I'm gonna show you what that covers, and then I'll show you what cancel for any reason covers. Your deposit would be $800. You would add in any optional tours that you want to take to pay for them. You would add in your Rome extension, if that's what you want to do, and make your final, or make your payment for that would be your whole deposit that is required for registration. You can pay with a check or you can pay with a credit card online. The check, if you pay with a check, then if it's a form, this form, the paper form, you simply bring it, mail it to your chamber of commerce. They will make sure that they make a copy of it also, and they will then send it off to Aventura World. There is information here on the different insurance policies, and I'm going to go over it on another page, but those are areas that everybody should take a look at, and then you make your signature and the date. And please always make a copy of your passport and also a copy of your registration form if you do it in paper. 
So for the travel insurance, here's what it protects. So your basic travel insurance is pre-trip cancellation due to sickness or death of you or your immediate family, medical on the trip, trip interruption, travel delays, a misconnection, emergency medical evacuation, lost baggage and personal effects, and baggage delay. So that is your basic coverage if you were to purchase it. And that is the basic coverage right here is the top coverage right here, depending on your total cost of your program. But that would be your coverage that you would pay. For the cancel for any reason insurance, you can pay for the policy with your initial reservation. And when buying a cancel for any reason plan, you have coverage of the standard policy that allows you to cancel for any reason whatsoever and receive reimbursement. Now it allows you to receive up to 65% of your penalty amount. And if you purchase the initial policy, then Aventura World also provides 35% of the penalty. And it's a little confusing and I'm gonna send you all an email to the chamber that will explain it much better in much better format. Also, you can call and check with us. This is with the travel protection, you could go online and I'm gonna give you all that information. So if you go back to your registration form, if you were to do it on paper and you decided you wanted to cancel for any reason, it is the lower area of the dollar amount. It is more than the basic. And it goes again by the total amount of your cost of your plan. So if you book online, this is what it will look like. If you have traveled with Adventure World before, and I don't think too many of you will have done that with us, then you would log in and your password, but most of you will be new. So you will fill this section out here. So your first name, your last name, your email, it's really important they have your correct email and then a password for this specific online registration, okay? They're going to ask you to fill all of this out and then confirm your password. And again, the next time you see, it's going to thank you for your registration. They're going to tell you you're going to get an email shortly to activate your account. And they want again to make sure that they've got everything correct. Again, log in and you're going to confirm your passport. Okay. It will then, you go to create account. And then you will get an email from Aventura World and you will need to watch it because it may come to your junk mail. It may not go directly into your Gmail or, or any of your other emails because we, you have not spoken to each other previously. So you will have to check to see if it's coming from Aventura World and it's in your junk mail. And they usually send it to you within a couple of minutes. And again, they'll want to make sure you verify your email address. And then again, here is what you'll do. So they're going to tell you your account is now active. And what will you do then? You will enter the booking code. So the book, this is not your booking code, but the booking code is on your first page of the paper uh, information itinerary sheet. On the very first page, it gives you a booking code and you will enter it in there. And then from there, you will start with passenger information. So for passenger information, sorry. Um, so here for your insurance, as I said, um, if you're reserving your trip online, the section five, um, it's only for information. And again, as I said, the insurance, I will send you additional information to make it much simpler than what it says here. So step one, you're gonna put in your departure date, your return date, your total trip cost, where you live, all that kind of information. Step two, you're going to do again with the insurance, however it's gonna cost you, what you're being covered for, 
all that type of information. They'll ask you per person details. And if you're insuring someone besides yourself, insure each other separately. And here you will be able to check for additional costs if there are any. Then step three, you put in first name, last name. You don't have a member ID, so you don't need to worry about it and put all the other information, home address, zip code, all of that. Step four, if you wish to have a beneficiary, you can put it in. Very important here, how should we deliver your policy or description of courage, coverage? You want to know, yes, send it to my email or put it in the post office box or post, send it by post office. Down here, you don't need to worry about a travel agency code or an agent. And when it asks you primary airline down here, there's a set uh, answer that says unknown because you will not know it when you're registering. And this just lets you know here. Primary destination of the country, you just click on it and you'll put Italy. And then this is all for payment of your policy. But again, you will have additional information to help you with that. Again, you just put in simple information, everything for the second person or the third person or however many there are, then you just check it over. And then you'll go into step two and that's your room uh, occupancy. So if you have one room, for, and you want double beds, single beds, things like that, they're going to ask you for those things. And then you go into your gateway description, which is your departure point, which will be Boston. Now, if you have people that want, and friends and family that want to come on this trip, they don't have to come to Boston to come on the trip. If they live in Florida or they live somewhere on the West Coast, they can leave from their home a town, as long as it's the closest international airport. So it could be Seattle, it could be Boise, it could be um, Albuquerque in New Mexico, any of the large cities, they can leave um, from there and come home to that area. But it will cost about $150 more. It's called a deviation. And they will, um, the uh, uh, operations team in Adventure World will uh, come back with a price before they finalize your registration and let you know if that's what you want to pay or if that's what they want to pay. So if you are coming from a different city other than Boston, you could put that information in um, with your address and everything else on your registration. And in the notes section, you would say, we want to come back to Boise, Idaho. We want to depart from Boise, Idaho, and we want to come home to Boise, Idaho. And then the operations team will um, be in contact with you and tell you what the additional cost would be. It's usually no more than $150 per person. Then after that, you go on to step four, so the optional tours and the extensions. So if you wanted to go to Cinque Terre, you will see and you will mark yes. If you want to go to Rome, to the Vatican and to the Sistine Chapel, then you mark yes, those types of things. Then step five, again, they're gonna go over the travel um, information here with you and that will be it. So then it goes back to your insurance to make sure that everything is okay. And they will tell you again, make sure that you've gone through all the insurance policies and things you want. At the end of it, they will send you an email saying they've received it. So we hope you will join us in 2023. And who's got questions? <clears throat> Terrific. Um, I see some in the chat now, Teresa, that we'll start with. Okay. Um, so we have, what is the weather for that time of year? Um, it's pretty nice. It's usually around 65 to 70. Um, and the 
night times in the 50s low 50s so it's not cold i would suggest this is a these are a casual type of trip so i would suggest you bring a sweater or a jacket for the evenings but chances are you won't necessarily need it in the daytime we always suggest you bring layered clothing if you want to go to a upscale restaurant um on a, in the evening because you will have evenings that you can go out for dinner and things like that i found that you could as long as you had a nice pair of dress slacks and a nice shirt um for ladies or men something like that you really didn't have anybody tell you you couldn't come in a lot of the restaurants everybody eats outside and they have heaters outside so most of the places there's no uh, restrictions on clothing at all Great. Um, is there a refrigerator in the hotel room? Yes, there are. Great. Um, how safe is it to travel alone? You're not traveling alone. You're a group travel and it's extremely safe. Now, if you want to travel on your own, um, you can go to the, um, you'll get information from the Italian embassy, but we have not had any problems. The places we're going to have been very, very safe. And again, you can always check with the hotel concierge. They will, and the tour director, they will help you. If you want to go somewhere um, in a, uh, you know, in a taxi at nighttime, they'll tell you which taxi company to use. And um, they'll give you a, a, the hotel card so you can't get lost. Because you, if you don't speak Italian, you can at least show them the card and they'll be able to get you back home. But we usually suggest you don't go all by yourself always at least have two of you together and that's pretty much a standard rule for any country in the world even in canada or the united states we usually suggest do two of you together not one by yourself great what time of the day um when does the day start um just like here early in the morning um you're this trip usually they open the restaurants for breakfast around 6.30 in the morning and their buffet breakfasts and their hot and cold breakfast. So you have lots of choices and the food is delicious. And you'll find there's European as well as American. They try very hard to make sure that Americans and Canadians feel comfortable with what they're used to for breakfast. So there'll be bacon, sausage, eggs, omelets, those types of things. And then they also have in, uh, European, Italian foods as well. So you can have olives in the morning if you want with your um, eggs and bacon or whatever you want there's and cheeses and all that kind of thing your day starts usually between eight and nine in the morning they will tell you your the bus leaves and they will your tour director will tell you the night before what you're going to be doing the next day and they will post it in a special place but usually right out front in the lobby and it'll show for your bus um, that's going to whatever, uh, say Florence, it will say what time you're leaving. It'll tell you what time you're expected to come back so you can plan for after that if you want to. And um, it, it'll be all there for you each, each day after the tour and you can check for the next day. How many pieces of luggage are allowed? You're allowed one 50 pound luggage, piece of luggage to check in. And um, honestly, if you have 50 pounds of luggage, you have too much clothes, okay? Um, I travel at about 35 pounds. That should be your goal, about 35 pounds, so that you have room to bring treasures home with you as well. And then you're allowed, um, if you have anything over 50 pounds, they will charge you extra for it. Each airline is different, but they're they're pretty strict now, especially in the last year and a half. They have really uh, cut down on wanting more or than people bringing two large suitcases. Now, if it's a couple, you're allowed one each. So you still have two suitcases, but you're allowed one each, okay? And then you're allowed two pieces of carry-on. One generally is a purse, most women, or a backpack for the guys. And then you can also bring a small carry-on with you suitcase, you know, the smallest that you find when you purchase suitcases, you're allowed to bring that on. Um, they may make you check it if the plane's overcrowded. I always tell people, put all your medical in either your backpack or your purse so that you do not lose it. Put your passport in your backpack or your purse because um, you can carry that on always and then you won't lose any of those things that are important. <clears throat> Great, what are the COVID requirements, if any? 
Right now, there are none, none whatsoever. If that changes, Aventure World checks that and gets information daily on the countries we travel to. And we would then let you, we'd let the chamber know immediately. Um, and then it would be up to you, obviously, to let your passengers know. But we would also let them know um, through emails as well. But we always give it to you as well, just to make sure that somebody doesn't uh, not open their email. <clears throat> Great. We um, also had a note from Sue. Jelinas letting us know that expedited passports right now are taking six to nine weeks and regular renewals are taking about 12 weeks. So if you're thinking about doing that sooner rather than later, um, also have is there a minimum number of travelers for the trip and can the trip be extended beyond Rome? Um, let me answer two ways. So uh, there is no minimum for travelers, but if there, we have a lot of chambers that do go to Italy. And so first come first serve sometimes works better than other times. So if you have folks that are interested in registering and they're sort of waiting and waiting and saying, oh, we'll do it before April 6th, I would encourage people to register sooner than later because obviously the chamber that has the most folks registered before that deadline date, they're going to obviously, we're going to say, well, we need obviously these rooms, this first, because they're the, there are more of them than anywhere else. So um, it's always good to get your folks to register early if you can. Um, and then the second question you're asking me is? Um, can, the strip, can the trip be extended beyond Rome? It can. Um, but it's done on your own time and your own money, okay? We can, if you are interested in staying a few days longer in, in Italy, you need to put it in the notes section. You need to give us exact dates of when you want to return. And the reason be is we will then book your return flight at no additional costs um, for you to come back but we have to know exactly the day you wish to return and it would have to be out of Rome. So you might wanna to go to Venice or you might go somewhere else, but you'll have to come back to Rome to leave um, from Rome, or you would have to come back. Uh, actually, you'd have to come back to Rome, even if you left from uh, Florence or Pisa because the flight will be coming back from Rome, the last one. <clears throat> Great. Um, do we need to bring outlet or power converters? You will, and we will go over all of that in a pre-departure meeting about a month before your trip leaves, okay? But yes, they, you do need converters and adapters. Um, there are hair dryers in the hotel, no problem, and they're good hair dryers, they work. Uh, but you do not, if you have, if you use a curling iron, ladies, you want to make sure that this curling iron is okay to be used with an adapter and a converter. Some of them aren't and they literally melt right in front of your eyes, okay? So if you're going to need a curling iron, then um, I usually suggest just figure it's a vacation and who cares, right? So just, um, but otherwise make sure you, you find that out. You've got to have, it literally has to say on the box, if you have a curling iron like and you buy one, you want to make sure it says that you can use a converter and an adapter in a foreign country. Okay. Great. Just a couple more. We have, is there an age group this tour is geared to? We have found that uh, young people um, in the ages of about 18 and up will enjoy it. Anything below that, we don't. We don't even, we don't take small kids. We don't take babies or any of that. We want to make sure that the people that are on this trip are able to enjoy it without small children. So there are no small children on it. There are no limits. This is um, what they consider out of five, a three in, um, in the walking and things like that. But remember, Italy has lots of steps as you can see on this last slide. Um, you want to be able to walk up and down steps. You want to be able to walk on cobblestone streets. Uh, they wash them a lot of times in the early morning. If they're a little bit wet, they might be a bit slippery. You want to wear very good non-skid walking shoes. And I would say bring two pairs. So when your feet get tired on one, you have the other ones you can use as well. 
Terrific. And then just a little bit of a follow up on the previous question about minimum travelers. We have, do we travel with another chamber? You won't if you have 30 plus, you probably won't. Um, although I shouldn't say that. I had um, 100 on my trip and we had a small chamber that only had 10 folks. So they added them to us. And actually it was great fun. Some of my chamber folks still stay in touch with that other chamber. So um, you could travel with another chamber. A lot of times you'll be in the same hotel with another chamber, one of our chambers. And um, quite often you get to mix as well. It's kind of fun to learn about somebody else, what they're doing. And um, you will you might be on a blue bus, your group, uh, or you might have, if you have a hundred people, you might have three buses. And um, there might be another bus that's uh, a fourth bus and you all travel together, things like that. But they they spread it out in such a way that there is time for everyone. So it's not as if you're fighting to be able to get into a place or hear the tour guides or see things. You will find that it's spread out in such a way that everybody is able to see things. <clears throat> Terrific. That's the end of our questions in the chat. Um, so I will open it up for other questions in a little bit. Um, but want to let everyone know that we will follow up with all the relevant information and you'll have my email as well for any follow up questions. And if I don't know the answer, I'll let Teresa know uh, and we'll get the answers to you. Yeah. We do have, if you're looking to do it on paper, I'm happy to mail a copy of the brochure to you or you can come by our office. We're on Hanover Street right next to the palace. Um, we're open, the building's open nine to five usually, and we have them right on a magazine rack outside. But if the lights are on, feel free to come in, say hi, would love to meet you. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna stop the recording here.